So basically, the roof line on this building was designed to capture and collect rainwater. And it's guttered on um, both the northeast and the south side. Also on that side of the structure with downspouts that feed into either the tank or the um, cistern collection um, skate pole. The roof line is configured um, so the um, focus of the rain coming down can go down these downspouts, which are all then plumbed underneath to go into our collection storage system. So coming around this way, there's um, that downspout, and then we have two more on this side of the building. This is considered the seven-sided structure. There's a downspout here from the rain gutters. All right, so all of this water then is captured and is fed an underground plumbing. Through a system that we, um, should we open, show that, Cameron? Okay. Yep, this is the first flush valve. There might be water in there. Yeah. Maybe not. So this is the first flush system where we can divert the water out through that pipe to clean the roof for the first during the first rain. And then this valve here, once the first flush is done, which is how we have it plumbed right now, then we switch this valve over and it plumbs directly into this tank. Watch your splitting. Into the first storage tank. Which is a 5,000 gallon storage tank. The water from this tank is gravity fed down um, to the pumping station at the bottom. And the reason we are using the pump at the base of the driveway is because that's where our second well was dug and had an existing pump down there and an existing line and infrastructure to pump to the top of the mountain to gravity feed down for usage. Originally, um, was used 100% for water collection until we finished this building and we were able to gutter it and, and actually construct a, a true rainwater harvesting system. What we use this water for now is we keep the bowl clean. The water you see in it right now is just from dew and fog over the past couple of days. But we clean it out prior to a rain, we capture open rainfall, we drop a submersible pump in immediately, and we pump it out with a hose into that tank. So every single, every single drop is collected. In the summertime when there's no water, the kids come up and skate in it. So the line from the 5,000 gallon tank mm -hmm. is all plumbed underground, comes out here, down through the copper pipe, um, we cut this line across and then it drops down here and goes to our pumping station. Yeah. So, from the, from the line that crosses the driveway, um, again, drops down, has an inline filter. So, right now, by the time it reaches this tank, it's gone through two inline filters, um, which we change basically every four to 5,000 gallons. So the line comes down, goes into this stainless steel tank, which was originally used at a winery for Chardonnay. It's a Chardonnay tank that a friend of ours gave us when they shut down their winery. <laughs> Nothing goes to waste. Yes. So from here, the water, the water pours in, and at the point where this tank is about half full, we open up the line, and we have a pumping system on this side that, pump, that turns the switch. And the pump is housed in storage here in, the, in a containment area here. And so the minute we turn the pump on, it uh, feeds through, goes through this line here, and then plumbs all the way up the line, runs all the way up the line to the very top of the mountain. 
And when we dug our second well, the second well is right here. And this is the actual pump and housing um, from that well, but the whole line and infrastructure to go up to the top was here. That's why we, we um, set the pumping station here. When this is half full, based on the rate of fill to the rate going out, you don't have to monitor it. At 5,000 gallons at the top, feeding into this, it's an equal balance between what's coming in to what's pumping up. And that was, I'm not a mathematician, but it's really just trial and error and checking on the pump constantly, because I'm water girl. So you check on the balance and the feed, and pretty soon you got it right, and then you know. Once it hits here, you can turn the pump on. This was the first building that we completed in 2000. And at that point, you know, we had a functioning well. We were thinking about conservation and rainwater collection, um, but not until our first well went dry did we start taking it seriously. So we just recently added this middle portion and then we've had our composting toilet. So what we did was we took the office, which is behind this building, the, and these two, and we did a gut, rainwater um, a gutter system. This is the first, so it's all guttered to go into this tank, but we have the first flush, which is actually dripping. Yes. There we go. See? Yeah, there you go. Don't That's all, look at that. Oh, not too much. Ooh, there's a lizard in there. Oh. Yeah, we gotta put, um, we, put, we, we have to put screens on the um, downflow. So then we have this pipe, this white one that runs along here right now, that you hook up here to this valve, open it up, and it connects down to the um, main tank. And it's a little bit rough on the infrastructure, but we couldn't put anything, We eventually we want to put it underground, but this spring we were so desperate, we wanted to just get it going. This is a 1300 gallon tank, so we actually collected in that second rain um, one and a half, so basically another 2100 gallons we collected from this roof line structure. Oh, nice. So very, very productive. Mm -hmm. um, we should have done it sooner. All three of these buildings have metal roofs, which is also ideal. Our main building, which we photographed first, has a comp roof which is not ideal for water collection, but it's what we could afford to do when we built the building. So sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. Um, so this building is guttered and it connects to a pipe here on this side. And then if we go around this building- Here, put this in, <laughs> this will be interesting. See if that fits on the. Okay. We're gonna put this. Yeah. Fits perfect. There we have it. Now we have the downspout screen for debris, creatures, <laughs> lizards. Lizards. See, this building is pretty much guttered on its own. It goes on to that building, which then downspout feeds into that gutter and goes down. Our bedroom is fed on that pipe going along the wall and all goes down there. Quite something. But again, we, we collected another 2,100 gallons because of it and um, very, very critical for us this year. This was our first tank. When we had our well and we first moved up here, the first well was plumbed in the infrastructure was plumbed to go just into this tank. And then we had a, um, a pressurized pump that would then pump to give us pressure for our water. And now this tank is used only for what we call construction water or gardening. And we can downfill when we have any extra water or old water from the tanks up above we open up our four inch line and we down feed into this tank. So we can fill this tank at any time, 
but we only do it if we have excess. Okay, so here are the three uh, 5,000 gallon tanks. Um, they're all plumbed underground um, to pump up from the pumping station below where we were with the stainless steel tank. And it's very simple. Um, you open up the tank you want filled. They're filled from the top and usage comes from opening the line below. So for example, right now we're using this middle tank. So the small line is open. Um, if we were to get more water tomorrow in a big rain and want to fill it, this basically shows that this feed line is open where this one feed line is closed. So if we wanted to fill the far tank, we basically switch these. So that one close this, open this. Mm -hmm. Very simple. Both these two tanks have four inch lines, which are um, fire lines and feed down to fire hydrant that we have down below, small fire hydrant. We recently added this tank, another 5,000 gallon tank, again, feeds up and then um, we open this line up for usage. Currently, this tank has about a thousand gallons in it. This one is tippy toppy full, and this has about a thousand. So right now we're kind of right around six to 7,000 gallons. So we should be fine through the balance of this year. And hopefully we do get rain earlier, um, you know, maybe November, December this year. So last fall, we had, we had no rain through the winter. Our first rain hit in February. So here's what happened. We had about 3,000 gallons of water in October. And we left on a five week trip and we had a caretaker here. So we had 2,000 gallons of water delivered just to make sure that the person staying here would be okay. So we get back, we again, we're down to 3,000 gallons of water. So we were able to collect with diligency every, the two rains, the two big rains we got, we were able to collect 12,000 gallons, but our capacity for storage is 26,000 gallons. So 26,000 mm -hmm. gallons, um, we weren't even at half. So very, very difficult. We had to be very diligent about it. Right now we have about 5,000 gallons left and we use now less than 800 gallons per month. Um, our son is living with us, but he's, you know, we're, we're in high water conservation, you know, but we're used to that. We don't do our laundry up here anymore. We wash it down the hill. We bring it up here to dry it on the line. So we're very, very efficient, very conservative. Um, but yes, it's been very, very difficult. Hopefully this fall, winter, even though it is an El Nino possibly, if we can get more rain, um, if we get 20,000 gallons, we should be able to live a year and a half easily. That's, that's it. Because our, our average right now is 800 or less because we're ultra conservative, but we rarely use more than a thousand gallons a month. And we don't have a toilet. We have a composting toilet, so it's waterless, which I'll show you as well. Mm -hmm. um, flushing drinking water down the toilet is, you know, just unconscionable. Mm -hmm. Thank you.